So Trusted Hands Network, it's a company, uh, as Katie alluded to. I can so relate to the comments I've heard tonight. So yes, it was founded out of my own personal experience. My mom has Parkinson's disease, unfortunately. She's fairly young to be dealing with some of the aging issues that she is, but because of that disease and lupus, um, she's actually um, suffered quite a lot on the healthcare side. And at the time she was living in Santa Fe and I was living here in LA. And I would call and say, mom, how's it going? She'd say, oh, the aide left early today or the aide didn't come. And as an adult child living a thousand miles away, that was really distressing to me. And so I thought there's gotta be a better way. I'm gonna create the four seasons of home care agencies. That's what I'm gonna do. And so I started to do the uh, research for that business plan and realized there's 50,000 home care agencies out there. The world probably didn't need another one, but what consumers needed was a way to find the good ones from the not so good ones. And so I decided I was gonna create the 1-800 dentist of home care. The keep it simple, put ads on TV, put ads on the radio and the internet, and then use live care advisors to match callers with pre-qualified certified home care agencies. And that's what we do today, essentially. It's three years later. All the little red dots you see on this map are the agency locations we have in our network. And we are connecting families with certified home care providers nationwide. We have 500 agencies paying us up to $300 for the referrals. So that's the business side of what we do. But what's the really valuable part for what we do is that certification process. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that um, tonight. And that we allow our agencies after they go through it to use the trusted hand seal of approval. So think good housekeeping seal of approval. Our network, we turned out, originally was just con uh, thought of for consumers, but it turns out that doctors and hospitals have the same challenge. So I was going, I was referred to a doctor who told me, uh, it was an internist, I had a potential thyroid problem, and she asked me what I did, and I told her, she's like, well, wow, I could really use that too, because you know, the truth of the matter is, patients come in my office, and I recommend them for this home care, and I don't know whether it's good or not, unless I see them back. And if I see them back in their worse condition than when I last saw them, then I know it wasn't. And so it's like, okay, light bulb went off. There are other people who are also interested in this concept of sifting through the not so good care providers to find the really good care providers. So very quickly, um, this is the marketplace that we serve. It's a marketplace that touches a bunch of different things. And as, as Katie you know, mentioned in her opening remarks, it really is a complex ecosystem here. Most of these providers are advertising or going about customer acquisition in their own ways. That's kind of inefficient because I know after three years of listening to calls, so to, to carry the woman that was here earlier, it's like, listen, that is what we did. So I had this concept, but I knew it was just me, end of one, let me go out and test it. So I did, and then we keep testing, we keep iterating. So I listen to calls every day. And that's where this idea to say, wow, when someone calls me, they aren't just looking for home care services, they're looking for a solution. And that's really what we provide. Consumers don't know what they need. They don't know what you do. They don't know what's out there. They just know that mom is frail or mom fell or mom has a problem or whatever it is. So we use live care advisors as guides. We ask some very directed questions. We have a smart script and we try to help them to recommend solutions to meet their individual situation because every situation is different. The high quality providers I already talked about on the home care provider side, it's very frustrating with 50,000 home care agencies. If you are a good one, how do you distinguish yourself? How do you raise your hand and say, I am actually a really high quality provider? So we help them with that in terms of marketing. And then we give them access to television advertising. So the truth of the matter is with all of the buzz about the internet and mobile and all those things, which are very important, don't get me wrong, a woman 45 plus still watches far more television than anything else. So a YouTube sensational hit is maybe 400,000 views. I don't know where you are, Dr. Kaiser, on your YouTube numbers, but I'll go check. Four million people tuned in to watch the season finale of Shark Tank. So just to give you a little scope, TV is where you reach these people. But part of what I would offer to the group here tonight is how do you help me help them? Because the truth of the matter is 22% of the people who call me today don't have the funds to pay for the long-term care they need and are calling for. And so at the moment, all I can do is give them the number for the local area on aging or give them the Medicare 800 number. But I really would love to collaborate with you of how do I help them find the solutions they need because they desperately need it. And it, it would break, I mean, you all know this because you live this every day, but it breaks my heart when I look at, we call them unmatched leads. But the truth of the matter is these are people who need help and the agencies, the private pay agencies can't take them. They're for-profit companies. Someone has to pay. 
Where do I find that help for them? Where do I find those services for them? Help me help them. So this is our certification process, which is the core of what we do. Home care, private duty home care is unlicensed in 27 states. Anybody could hang their shingle and say, I'm a home care provider. Personally, I have a problem with that. So we looked at the 23 licensed states, we talked to some high quality providers and came up with our own criteria that we apply to all of the agencies in our network. They have to have been in business at least a year. Why? Home care franchises are the fastest growing franchise out there. People are deciding between a Subway franchise and a home care franchise. Personally, I don't want those people learning the business, could be very good people, on the backs of my consumers. So we require them to have been in business for at least a year. They have to have their caregivers as employees. Why? We believe, and was it Aaron's slides actually, caring for a child is very different than caring for a senior. Having a direct hire caregiver for a senior is a dangerous proposition. Dementia and Alzheimer's and all the different conditions that go on there, you need a caregiver who's trained, who's supervised, who has some sort of support system to provide that high quality care on a daily basis. Somebody who's gonna go into the home at least on a monthly basis to see what's actually going on in the home. That's why we prefer to work with agencies and we don't do the direct hire or the registry model. Through that, we look to make sure that they have them as employees, that they provide workers' comp insurance coverage, liability insurance coverage, we check all that. We do the criminal background checks. We do a criminal background check at step two on the agency owner and the agency themselves. We turn down people at both of these levels on a daily basis. So we do it across all 50 states. We're looking for tax liens, bankruptcies, criminal records, DUIs, all of those things are grounds for disqualification. Once they pass that, we allow them to join the network and use our seal of approval. After that, we actually follow up with the consumers to try to create greater transparency because the rubber really hits the road on what's actually going on in the house. So we call the consumer after we make the referral, three months into it, six months into it, nine months into it, to try to understand what is going on in that home. And through those consumer ratings, unlike Yelp, this is actually based on an actual experience of a caregiver in a home. It's not just a random survey. And we think that that provides greater transparency in the market. As I mentioned before, and I'll just go through this because I'm way past my time, I'm sure. We do think that there are other applications of who are other providers who are interested in this network and we're pursuing that this year. So we did an initial close. I'm raising $2 million. Um, I've already done two friends and family rounds prior to this. We have a signed term sheet with Golden Seeds, which is a female angel network. Any women in the room who are wanting to become entrepreneurs, come talk to me about it. These guys are an amazing female um, angel network in New York who are specialists in female run and manage companies and startups. Um, we're having a uh, midterm close next week, so if you've got your checkbook out, you can still participate. We have hard circled, um, as of today, $500,000, and the minimum investment level is 25. The pre-money valuation is uh, 3 million, and um, yeah. We're a referral network. We like to distinguish ourselves in the lead generators, because unlike lead generators, we qualify on both sides. So we qualify the providers in our network, and then we also qualify leads into referrals. So we spend about 15 to 20 minutes on the phone with people who call us, qualifying them into a referral for our home care agency. So if you're private duty, I'm never going to send you a Medicare home health lead. If you're a home health company, I'm never going to send you a private duty home care lead. I never send out people who don't have money to pay for the agency services they're looking for, et cetera. So we call ourselves a referral network.